Endless Winter has to be one of those games that I covered way back when that made me grateful for the fact that I cover Kickstarter games. It just is that good. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm unboxing and rambling on Endless Winter. Endless Winter, a game I covered, well, a long time ago, as I said. We'll go, first of all, coffee shot as usual, in general, knife and coffee and all that stuff. This is one of my favorite mugs, by the way, still is. Five things I like almost as much as board games. Dreaming about board games, talking about board games, watching videos on board games, websites about board games, and reading about board games. They left off rules, although rules are more of a necessary evil than anything else. Let's go ahead and get into this. This is Endless Winter, in case you're wondering, in case you're watching as I angrily wave around my knife. Uh, this is the pre-production copy of Endless Winter, which means that's not true. That's not entirely true. This is like the mostly final production. There's some small differences, some small things. Like I know like some boards didn't dry as fast as they needed to because they're getting it out. So if you see anything that looks like it's not ideal, probably your copy's got it too. You're in trouble. No, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is this is probably not going to have that. This is a slightly pre-production copy, very tightly wound plastic as I try to get my knife into an angle without destroying the box over here. And Endless Winter, so what, what do I mean by that? First of all, a disclaimer for those who haven't watched my unboxings and ramblings, this will be partially about the game, because why not? It's here after all. This will be partially about the fact that I just like to talk about various stuff, sometimes about Endless Winter, sometimes about anything, sometimes about the fact that this is my second cup of coffee and it's poorly timed. There will be a third cup of coffee later that doesn't fit well into my unboxing schedule, but unboxing and ramblings do have coffee. That's part of the contract I signed with myself, and I'm a fairly terrible boss. Uh, endless winter. Endless winter. Let's go ahead and dive into this. I should probably move the coffee out of the way before I slam into it. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Timestamps as usual to any relevant section. By relevant section, I mean like the box I'm opening. In terms of the conversation I'm up to, I can't really help you there. Let's go ahead and see what we've got over here. We have Endless Winter, Paleo Americans, Stan Kodansky, Art by the Micho, little things over here we got the box the rules we have unconscious mind unconscious mind this will be coming out at some point i don't know much about this one past the fact that it looks cool this is one of those tricky parts okay because i i loved endless winter L love i'm gonna use current tense i love endless winter i say love in the sense that i i really really love endless winter i really enjoy endless winter i've recently played endless winter on tts which reminded me that yes it has held up and i still do enjoy the game but that leads to a problem of like what happens when i cover unconscious mind Will I like it? Will I not like it? It sets up an expectation, an expectation that, like, I've only covered one game from Fantasia Games, and will I like the next game as much? I don't know. I have no clue. We'll find out. But, Endless Winter. Ooh, there's a solo mode. I haven't actually looked into the solo mode. Let's dive into this. The rules. I, this is the first time seeing the final rulebook. I've covered the... I, I've seen the game in the past. I've done this. This feels very nice. This... Oh, that's right. That's right. They. I knew they were going to do this. They cover this in the Kickstarter. They have that material that you kind of get from Stonemaier Games rulebooks. They have that slightly, like glossy papery thing that really works well uh rules cover like they seem fairly fairly basic fairly i mean i know how to play the game i'll probably reread the rules just in case because it doesn't hurt we have the final scoring we have the card abilities all that stuff over there sacred stone tiles modules all the things although i haven't played with all the modules yet there's a whole bunch of modules i have to dive into we have the solo mode rule book which looks like it's eight pages long but that can't be that bad i might actually dive into the solo mode i might do you know what here's what we do over here because I've been doing more Twitch content recently. There's been like a lot more Twitch content. Uh, Camp Co-op, you can check it out. There'll be a link in the description down below. I will try to play Endless Winter Solo over on Twitch at some point. We'll see. Uh, we have the expansion tray, the VAC, all these things that cover this. And then back to the box. So, what do we have over here? We have our box, Endless Winter. We'll get into all the expansions shortly. And this is what we have here as far as, well, stuff. We have our sun drop miniatures, our boxes, our things. Let's move this off to the side. Move my coffee off to the side as well as I get that off over there, and then grabbing our box. Oh, so they have the whole sheet telling us that this is how everything goes in, covering all the stuff. I'll deal with the organization aspects of things later. For right now, I'm just going to look at what they have here, because we have our, our tokens. We have more boxes and more vac trays, which we'll have to put all that back in shortly. We have delightful art and card art and things. We'll get to all of this, and I'm trying to figure out what's underneath here, because I'm guessing punch board. We got punch board underneath here. So let's take this out. I can, I can toss this. I don't really care about that. Although it did almost hit the coffee, which would not be quite as good. We have our double layered punch boards over here. These are going to be where you store your tribe thingamajiggies. Tribe thingamajiggies is the technical term. But let's go ahead and put this off to the side. Then let's grab my handy dandy knife and grab this. And we'll continue talking about endless winter in a second. So 
The fun part of covering Kickstarters and prototypes is you get early access to things. And it's very cool. Like, it's very, very cool to have early access to things. It is. But also, at a certain point, you realize one day that you wake up and you realize you've been playing a lot of mediocre games because you have not been helping, you've not been waiting for the, the crowd, for the people, for reviewers, for general ratings to pour in and tell you all the reasons that a game is not good. And there's lots of reasons why games are not good. And so one day you wake up, let me just show you the board over here. One day you wake up and you realize that you've been covering a lot of mediocre games and it's a little less fun than you thought it was. No complaints, mind you, no complaints at all, but that does happen. And I remember having this conversation when I first started getting into reviewing Kickstarters, when I first started getting into reviewing prototypes. I remember having this conversation with somebody else, a friend of my game group, because he had been signed up against his will to play all these mediocre games. And he was asking me, like, well, is it fun? Are you, are you playing amazing games? Like, what can you point to as a reason you're happy you're covering Kickstarters? And Endless Winter was the game at the time that I just played that I said, I'm happy I played Endless Winter. This was a very fun game. Now, it's by no means the only fun prototype I've played. I've played a lot of fun prototypes over the years, a lot of excellent prototypes, but I remember back then, I can't remember what number of games I had covered or whatnot. Here's our punch board. Let's go and show you these for a second. But I, I can't remember the exact games I had or hadn't played or anything. I'd have to look back at what I'd covered at that time. But I do actively remember thinking that Endless Winter was the game I pointed to when I was thinking through, here's our idle board, ignore my rambling chain of thought as I point to this. This, by the way, fun fact about this, if I recall correctly, this was like a fan-made piece of art. They had their own idle board that some fan thought wasn't thematic enough, and he's like, hey, how about I do this? And so they had the, the Micho adapt his artwork to this, and it became part of the game. So whoever you are, unnamed fan 424, great job. But anyways, let's go ahead and put this back in the box over here. We'll punch and sort all this stuff later. And let's put this over here. This is the side track. This is the animal track where you'll be storing all the animals that you'll be slaughtering. There's a lot of slaughtering of animals in this game because you got... Actually, not entirely true. There's a lot of animal collecting in this game. Sometimes it's slaughtering. Other times it's keeping it for the victory points you get for keeping the animals caged forever. Anyways, here we got our back trace. We're going to deal with all that stuff. I'm going to figure out what goes where. Honestly, this core box, the game is amazing. Core box, less exciting to dive into than I was hoping so far. But we haven't looked at the miniatures. We'll dive into all that soon. But my point is, Endless Winter was the game that gave me hope, which sounds very dramatic. I mean, honestly, honestly, if they ever do another, here, you know what, Fantasia Games, because I know you're going to watch this at some point, when you next do a Kickstarter for Endless Winter, I want the testimonial, like from Board Game Code, to be like, Endless Winter is the game that gave me hope. Okay, let's, let's have people look at that and see what that means. Board Game Code is a shill. Games give him hope. Oh my gosh, that guy will say anything. Yeah, honestly. So, here we got the tents over here. Let's go ahead and show you some of these. These are the wooden tents. And we have some deluxified pieces I'll grab off to the side as well. We're going to go through all of these. Again, timestamps for the various bit sections in case you want to see all of that stuff. But we have all these tents over here. I, honestly, I really, I can't wait. I want Endless Winter, the game that gave me hope. I want that to be on a Kickstarter somewhere. I just think, I think it's so amusing. But anyways, we have these over here. These are the, um, we have better ones of these. So I'm not going to show you these. We have the deluxe pieces instead. So we'll go ahead and show you that. I got everything for this game. Uh, then we have this and this. And we have all of, well, these guys as well. This is one of the things as well, by the way, because one of the things I was looking into for a long time, a, a conversation I've had with myself is how do I monetize this channel? If I don't take money from publishers for reviews or previews or all that stuff, how do I monetize the channel? And one idea I had at the time that never really left, but I also haven't executed on it and I'm not in a rush to execute on it, is, I'll tell you in a second, first meeples over here, miniatures, no, meeples, meeples, these are meeples. Over here we have these over here, these are the meeples in the game, that just dropped, that's okay. One of the ideas I had for a while was, was the idea of giving Kickstarter advice. Like, hey, Kickstarter is a messy, angry place with a lot of messy, angry people, and maybe there's conversations we can have around things that I've seen that make people angry and upset, and maybe there's ways we can talk about how to not engage in those things that make people angry and upset. Here's some free tips for you, whoever's watching this video. One, if you do an early bird, make it at least 48 hours, not 24 hours. Two, if you do an early bird, do not make it limited in scope. Like, hey, there's a hundred of these you can have. That ticks people off. Three, if you do an early bird, make sure that it, it is uh, not cash early bird, but it's something extra you get early bird. That's always a good one as well. Four, set expectations accordingly. If there are going to be fun unlocks throughout the campaign, great. If there's not, make it pretty clear from the beginning there's not going to be fun upgrades throughout the campaign. There's a lot of fun things like that, fun little tips and tricks, just, and that's just a small sampling off the top of my head, of things that I've seen that cause people to be upset. Now, one thing I've, I've told people very specifically over, uh, to whenever, whenever I talk to any content creator, any publisher, I'm very specific about the fact that my goal at any given time is to give the advice that's best for you. You being the person I'm speaking to, not you being you. Which means I might sit here, and this is something that's the kind of thing that gets me in trouble, but whatever. I've always said things that get me in trouble, and I won't stop now. 
I will happily sit here and tell you, don't back that game. It's a bad deal. You should not get it. And then I'll turn around and say to them, but you should price the game at X because honestly, people are going to buy it anyway. So that was, that's what makes sense. That's what you should do. My goal is always to give the advice to the person I'm speaking to because that's who I currently am speaking to. I'm not here to say, hey, publisher, do the thing that's good for the backers. I'm not here to say backers, do the thing that's good for the publisher. I'm just going to tell you what I think you should do based on what I know. And you can take that advice or not. That's up to you. Point is, I'd be decent at Kickstarter advice because I'd I know all the things that people fall for and that they shouldn't fall for. And I try to get them to not fall for, but they do anyway. And so I'd probably be fairly evil. I should not go into Kickstarter marketing. I'd definitely go evil. It's the, it's the darkest timeline. I'm, I'm evil Alex. Anyways, let's go show you some cards over here. Cards, we have these over here. We have our starting hand cards. We have our various animal cards you're having. These are the animals that you can hunt and or keep for sets. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. I just played with some of these uh, Ancestor cards as well in the expansion. Uh, I just did a TTS, and that's not true. I did a Twitch playthrough of the base game over on Twitch somewhere a few weeks ago. Played that and got into a bunch of these fun things. I don't know where these cards go, but I feel like they I feel like they go somewhere here. I'm a little nervous as far as where everything goes here, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop, drop these in here, and I'll deal with the consequences later. I hope it fits sleeve cards. Fantasia Games, I hope this fits sleeved cards. I really, really hope it does. Here's our angster modules over here. These, when we put them down the table, you just create various butterfly effects or whatnot. They have a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. Like, I don't even know what they have. Honestly, you can make up whatever you want as far as just a shape on the board that works. And then you start putting down your tokens in them and spreading it out, getting the variety of rewards. There's going to be a bunch of those as well in the various uh, expansion boxes at the same time. And that's these over here. And then we have our miniatures. Let's go ahead and show you some miniatures. These are sun-washed miniatures, sun drop miniatures in some way, shape, or form. We have also have a hut. I don't think I've shown you the huts yet. Let's go ahead and show you these miniatures over here. So we have this guy over here. Over here, Chief. I don't know his name. I'm just going to go with Chief. And we'll just go one of these one at a time, showing you each of these. And they have another spot for the extra one from one of the expansions as well. These look nice. I, I'm not a huge fan of the sun drop. I think it's nicer than the, the plastic that they have otherwise. But the coloring's a bit interesting. So anyways, the reason, the reason I was talking about giving Kickstarter advice and that kind of conversation is because one of the things that I, I did at the time is I got on the phone with Fantasia Games way back before they ran the Kickstarter and I said, hey, here are all the things you're trying to do. Let's have a conversation about things that I think make sense and things that I think don't make sense. And one of the things that I said I don't like, I said it's not the end of the world, but I don't like it, is I don't like it when companies mix up mixed uh, miniatures and meeples. When you have both in the same product, I don't love it. That remains true with Endless Winter, by the way. I mean, the meeples over here, we have nice meeples, we have nice miniatures. They're both fine, but I don't love the mix of them. And that's something that they decided to go ahead with, and it works, it does the job. It's not my favorite, but not everything in life has to be specifically catered to me. It'd be great if it were. It would. It would be really, really nice if the entire life, the universe, and everything were catered to me, but I just don't think that's how things work. Let's go ahead and show you some of these huts over here. We have these huts. And we can go ahead and show you these. Just one of them. Let me show you one of them in a bit more detail. The one that fell. Let's go ahead and show you the one that fell in a bit more detail. These are more miniature adjacent. These will go onto your player boards, which we haven't really shown you that much. Let's see if I can grab them without making things fall. This is your player board over here. And we pop it down over here. And these huts take up the spots over here, like so, going onto the player board, covering those up. Or really, they start here, and then they go onto the main board. And as you uncover them, you get different bonuses from those. These boards are fun. The entire thing is fun. The entire Endless Winter is a game of worker placement deck building. Uh, they did worker placement deck building before. It's cool, although it's not really fair because I'm sure Lost Rooms of Arnak was in development and Dune Imperium was in development. And then Endless Winter is like, hey, we're going on Kickstarter. We did worker placement deck building. Here's a game. And then, you know, before you know it, another game comes out. Two more games come out that do the same thing. And it just changes the conversation. And this meeple has to go that way for it to actually fit in here. Let's see if we can get this to go and close. No, no, did I just bend a card? I may have bent a card. This is what happens when you try to do things on camera and you'll focus on the camera stuff. Well, that looks nice now. Let's go ahead and put that back in the box. We'll have to figure out how to put it all back properly once I punch everything. We'll do all that. Right now, I'm just about opening the boxes and that kind of thing. And looking at my computer to make sure I hit record. That's always a terrifying moment every single time. Coffee break. Do you know Devon Talks Tabletop? I know Devon Talks Tabletop. Do you know why I'm talking with Devon Talks Tabletop right now? Because now, whenever I take a drink of something, instinctively, in my head, I want to say, timestamp. Timestamp, timestamp, which is something he does, which is obnoxious and doesn't make any sense and is incredibly unprofessional. And yet the only thing I can think of is timestamp. 
He's the worst influence, by the way. He's the absolute worst influence. He's the worst in general. You should not subscribe to Devon Talks Tabletop. Not one bit. If you hit Devon Talks Tabletop and you hit 10, if once he hits 10,000 subscribers, which will happen at some point, apparently he's getting a hamster, by the way. Anyways, here we got the, the player boards. Let's go ahead and show you these dual layer player boards over here. And these are going to be where you're tracking a variety of things in the game. You can be using force, uh, you can be using food for extra things. You can be using labor. You can be tracking those. Uh, you can kill the animals for more food. You can use the labor and food in order to go ahead and build these things out over here, getting those stuff. You can be building your huts on the main board. You can have your monolith that is slowly spread out across the monolith tracks. Honestly, Endless Winter is one of the messiest games out there that I know, but is really, really enjoyable. Every time I play it, I have a blast playing it. It's just a messy game at the same time. Just lots of things going on. Like, there's a lot of stuff happening in the game, and that's our core box. But wait, let's go ahead and show you one more thing before we go into the core box, which are these over here. These over here. Let's go ahead and show you this. And we got these. So these are basically nicer versions. They are deluxe resin components. Let's toss this over here behind me. Slowly messing up the floor. It's always a cleanup when I'm done here, by the way. It's like just tossing things casually around, hoping for the best. And then later, after this video is done, I go off camera and just slowly clean up the mess that I made. These are nice. I'm sorry. Let me pause for a second and admire these. These are nice. Let's go ahead and show you this. And we got these over here. You can't tell the difference, I'm assuming. I mean, between these and the ones you get in the game, on camera, I don't imagine there's a significant difference, but the feeling of these, these are very, very nice. These are gonna replace what you have otherwise for your monoliths, for your tokens. They are very nice. I'm gonna, I mean, I said it a few times, but they are very nice. We got more of them in the different player colors. We have more player colors, the this, the that, the this, these are all the monoliths. We're gonna dump them into the box over here, but I'm gonna show you these, because these are very helpful. Let's go ahead and show you these, and we have these okay so these over here are the various markers i guess i think this goes on the aisle track i'm not sure exactly but they're very cool they're very cool as far as these go over here hopefully this is focusing i hope the camera's grabbing focus and all that stuff but yeah these are just very 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 cool i like these a lot we got a little wolfie wolfie over here look at wolfie buddy look at that these these feel nice these look nice these are nice i like these a lot these resin components excellent big fan big fan Let's go ahead and dump these into the box and then put this away and we are done with the core box. Honestly, that wasn't even too long. That wasn't, it's like, it's almost like this is a game that isn't chock full of miniatures and instead it's a Euro game. It's a very good Euro game. I like it a lot. And there is a playmat. Should we do one of the playmats now? There's like 14 playmats. Uh, the way they did the playmats in this game, in this expansion, honestly, the way they ran the whole game was very fascinating. The whole campaign. Timestamp. Uh, but the way they ran the whole campaign was fascinating. They basically tried catering to every single person's whims. Let's go ahead and show you one of the playmats because they have a bunch of playmat options and configurations over here. If we can grab this out of here with the annoying loud crinkly noise. And let's go ahead and roll this. I like doing this on the top camera so you can just see it roll out over here. That is one playmat over here with, there we go. That's hopefully just, just shaking everything. This is going to be one of the playmats we have over here as far as just the options of the table. We have our idle track over here. We have all that. We have, well, everything. We have all the stuff over here. It just looks cool. We got our, our idle stuff. I'm just saying the word stuff a lot. This is where you're going to put the cards out. This is like the full-size playmat. It's a, it gives you, there's a few options as far as different ways they did it. We also have, because part of the problem is we also have this over here, which just makes it even more complicated to deal with because we have this over here, which is going to be the offshoot playmat. So if we go ahead and grab this out here, we have our separate off to the side playmat, which now you have to find a space to put this playmat as well, because this is where you're going to be putting out the hexes of the game. Like I said, this is not a small game. So now you can put this on top of the playmat. They made sure it's the same width. Or alternatively, you also have a separate option for the cards over here, which goes over there. And then lastly, you have a giant all-in playmat where everything stores. That's obnoxious. I like Endless Winter a lot. I like playmats in theory. I do not know if I ever bother using the playmats for this game. I don't know. I need a better playmat system. And I, I've mentioned this before, and people always point to different options out there. And I respect that. There are different options out there that will give you a better playmat system. But, like, I mean, I have to manage four playmats for this game or have a super giant table. I like this game, but I don't have to say only nice things about this game. And I don't think I'm going to use these playmats. You know, I, maybe I will. I don't know. I have to, I have to give it time. But, like, even some of my favorite games that I want to use playmats in theory, practically speaking, I just don't. Until I get a better system, I just don't. Let's go ahead and put this away. That might have given a nice little puff of air to the camera. That's the way this works. Sometimes I'm not cognizant. Like the mic's right over here. Like if I snap my fingers, watch, I'm gonna snap my fingers directly into the mic right now. That's directly into the mic, right there. That's as loud as it gets. That was hopefully not, like if you're wearing headphones on a very, very loud setting, I apologize in advance and um, I'm sorry. If you really want to play mat, reach out to me and maybe, no, no, I, don't, I can't, I can't do that because there's a lot of you and only one play mat. 
Well, it's actually four play mats, so in theory. Let's go ahead and dive into the Ancestors expansion, which is a fairly heavy expansion. I tossed that over to my other hand, not expecting it to actually hit that hard. This must be full of cards and things. Let's see if we can slowly open this out without damaging the box. Honestly, I don't mind damaging the box that much because I'm probably not going to keep the box. It's an expansion box after all. But who knows? Who knows? So we're going to go ahead until I know. Until I know I like being safe. Let's go ahead and open this up over here. We have the Ancestors expansion for Endless Winter. The tiny little rule book, which is great. That means there's not a lot of rules here. There's just a lot of cards and tokens and cards and cards and the Mammoth module. Is there a miniature in here? There better be a miniature in here. There is a miniature in here. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this thing over here. This is going to be your mammoth mini mammoth miniature. That's adorable. I like it. I like it. I mean, this is basically Stan, stand, uh, not Stan's. Uh, this is the, the Micho's art converted into miniature form, which works well. I like it. It does the job. We got some Yeti promos, some Mastodons, a tiny little, I don't even know what this is. This feels like the most obnoxious thing ever. This is like the tiniest, uh, this just felt obnoxiously small. This looks like it's just a bunch of promo stuff or things. Honestly, I don't remember much, by the way. I remember the cave painting expansions. I remember the rivers and rafts, I think it's called. Rivers and rafts, yep, and the cave paintings. The Axis expansion was kind of a, a batch of just different stuff and things and stuff and things. I don't remember much about it past the fact that there were stuff and things in this box. We'll look through all these rules later. I sorry, I'm sorry I can't be more educational. Like, there were some cards. There were some animals you can hunt, some different things like that. Let's toss this back up over here and dive into the rivers and rafts expansion, which I have not played with. I've played with the uh, cave painting expansion. I've played with the base game. I've played with some of the stuff from the Anxious Expansion. I just haven't played with everything yet, which makes sense because there's a lot of stuff here. But I will dive into it. Like I said, make sure to head on over to uh, Camp Co-op because I will... This link down below, subscribe, follow, all those usual things. I will make sure to play this at some point. Once I have a chance, I'm probably going to play it with like other people first. But I, I want to cover it, and I want to cover it again. It's been a long time. I don't mind re-reviewing this game. Comparing it to, you know, Lost Ones of Arnak, Endless Winter, Dune Imperium. Although I have to play the expansion for Dune Imperium, by the way. That's one thing that I've done. I played the expansion for Lost Ones of Arnak, and it's the only way I'll play Lost Ones of Arnak. I've read the rules for Dune Imperium, and I'm for the... Well, I've played Dune Imperium. I've read the rules for Dune Imperium, the expansion, and I'm pretty sure it's the only way I'll play Dune Imperium again, but I won't know till I know. These are nice, by the way. Let's go ahead and show you these. So, the Rivers and Rafts expansion. These give you, like, this new aspect to the map that you're playing with. The map that you're slowly spreading out. We have these buildings, or things, not really buildings, so much as, like, locations and stuff that go up over here. You know, they, they do the job or whatever. Don't know what they're for at all. I remember reading about them, doing the Kickstarter. I remember reading this stuff. I just... It's been a long time, honestly, so you, you can't fault me for not remembering every little thing. We have an eraser! I think it's an eraser. No, that can't be an eraser. That makes sense. The eraser wouldn't be in this expansion. I remember they had a stretch goal for uh, pens, which was a lot of fun. What is this? What in the world is this? I'm sorry. I need to open this up and look this up. This is a landmark. Oh, it's a landmark. Okay, that's a landmark. It's just another landmark. It's just not wood. It's more glass-based. It's just another landmark. It's the monolith. Score one point for each camp you have on this hex. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with this. I need to be the most of the stuff. I, I need to dive into this. I want to dive into it. The cave painting expansion is nice, but I really want to dive into the rivers and rafts expansion because that's the big expansion that I have not gone into yet. And I do want to try all this stuff. I'm curious what stuff works well solo or not. Again, I, I hope to do... I like this game. I like this game. This is the game that gave me hope. I want that on a Kickstarter campaign somewhere, I tell you I do. Anyways, last box, and then we can call it a wrap in this one. This is not the largest expansion, not the largest unboxing I've done. If you want that, stay tuned for uh, Massive Darkness coming soon. I think this video is going up before Massive Darkness, I'm pretty sure it is. So Massive Darkness, uh, that'll be coming soon. I'll have that. I'm going to have Stars of Akarios. I still owe one for uh, the Hunter's AD. I still owe one for, really going back far enough, I owe one for Dice Throne, like an all-in on Dice Throne Adventures and Dice Throne all the stuff and all the miniatures and all the things. I have a bunch of unboxings that I owe people stuff for. Uh, the Feed the Kraken. I mean, O is a relative term. Many of these, when I say O, I just mean I got the game and I want to unbox it. I don't owe anyone any unboxings. Nothing, none of these stuff are paid or anything like that. Although Endless Winter is from them, to be fair. I backed it as well, but this is an early production copy. So, because they, they, they had an early production copy and I'm not going to say no to that. Timestamp. The timestamp thing has got to be funny, right? I mean, because it depends on who you are. I had one person once. This is where we got markers, markers. I had one person once. Um who I was talking about Devon Talks Tabletop, and I was talking about the hamster and the whole situation there. And he's like, uh, you guys think this hamster joke is funnier than it actually is. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's true. I'm okay with that. Many times I'll think a joke is funnier than it is. And you know what? It's okay. The floor is a mess. It's okay to not think a joke is funny. It's okay to to not find it amusing. It just means you're not you're not having as much fun. The hamster cult is a real thing. Us is the cult of Marvel United. All praise be to the hamster Marvel United cult over on Devon Talks Tabletop. Devon's gonna appreciate. You see, that's the thing. Devon will appreciate all this. And like, 
a good few hundred people. And that's enough for me. It's enough to like put a smile on people's faces. I like putting a smile on people's faces. It's funny. It is funny to me. Anyways, the uh, Cave Paintings expansion. Let's actually talk about the game for a second. Cave Painting expansion is going to be an expansion where you draw little modules on the cave painting. You have this cave painting. You have your little dry erase markers. You have this board with a different material because it's dry erase board, all that stuff. You'll be making little lines on these as you go. It's going to add another. Where is the board? It's going to add this over here as another spot on the main board that gives you another spot where you can place people down and it slowly goes down and you draw little lines and circle different bonuses. Some of those bonuses will be recurring. Some of them not. I've only played this expansion one time and honestly, I liked it and if you're like you don't look like you liked it I hear you I liked it but instinctively I still played as if this was standard endless winter what's this is this in the regular I hope it's in the ancestors box over there we'll see anyways uh, but I still played as if it was regular endless winter which means I didn't focus as much on on that aspect on the cave painting I focused a little on the cave paintings I didn't want to be like feel completely left out but I focused more on on the regular stuff that I'm used to in endless winter and so I did the cave paintings a little bit I dabbled in it I think it works honestly having played this one time I don't think I'd miss it if it didn't exist I think I will play with it but I don't think I'd miss it it didn't necessarily there's only one place, so take it with a heavy grain of salt. But I don't think it added value to my Endless Winter experience. I think that the other content does. Rivers and Rafts I haven't talked about yet. I haven't played it yet, so I can't comment on it. But the K-Painting expansion, I like it without feeling that it's absolutely necessary, although more plays will, will determine that a lot more. There's always a balance when it comes to more content. The question is not just do you function, do you work, do you do the job? The question is what do you add? Because you add more stuff, you add more fiddliness, you add more rules, so do you add to the experience? I think that Cave paintings worked really well, and it didn't add to my experience. At least not based on the one play, but again, more plays, more time, all those factors. Sometimes there's a value for the sake of variety. I just, I'm just not there with Endless Winter yet. I don't need variety for the sake of variety yet. That's pretty much our unboxing, by the way. We're kind of, we're kind of done at this point. We, we, we did all the stuff. We opened all the boxes. We talked about the playmats. We made ridiculous comments about the Hamster Cult and Marvel United and Devon Talks Tabletop. And by the way, timestamp. Wow. I always wonder when I do videos like this, like how many subscribers do you gain versus lose when you're this all over the place? It's always interesting to me because because if you're here, if you're like a regular viewer of the channel, by now you might be mildly entertained by this. But if this is your first video, like if this video is your first video on Board Game Co., you got to think I'm crazy. Like it only makes sense, right? I, I seem fairly crazy. To that end, I'll say, welcome aboard. Most videos are going to be like this. I, I like the madness. I embrace the chaos. And honestly, if you want crazy, uh, make sure to watch Devin Talks Tabletop's live streams because his stuff is absolutely bizarre. Also over on Quacklope, although those are secret live streams. Quacklope, if in case you didn't know, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this as a favor for you, okay? Here's a favor for you. Maybe, depending on who you are. Quacklope does this thing called secret live streams that go up at like 1.30 in the morning randomly with no warning, no announcement. You happen to catch it, you happen to catch it. Great. Those are available to everyone. When the live stream's over, it's gone. It's, it's hidden. It's secret. You cannot have the live stream anymore. The live stream is done. But you know what happens next? If you are a Quackle of Patreon, you can see the live stream after the fact. Do you know why that's relevant? Because a week or two ago, a bunch of people paid like a few hundred dollars to have both Devin and Quacklope kicked in places where men don't want to be kicked in. And if you want to see that, if you want to get that on camera, and if you want to enjoy that show, uh, that'll cost you five bucks a month for Crackloop. And honestly, five bucks a month just means one time. You just only have to do it once, and you can find that video. It, the, the price of admission was $150 for Devin, and then I volunteered. I said I'd pay $150 if we included Jesse in that. Jesse counted with $250, and me and someone else teamed up and made that happen. Sometimes I think most of my relationships in life are dysfunctional. Other times I know they are. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and call this a wraps. I don't know where this went on this one. This was like a little bit crazier. Like the end, I just kind of wanted to just keep saying crazy things, and I, I did so. So I'm going to call this a wraps on the unboxing. There'll be more coming. There'll be stars of Akaros. There'll be massive darkness. Massive darkness will be with my son. He's all over the place more than I am, so good luck with that. Although I know where he gets it from, so that's fine. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and rambling of Endless Winter. There'll be more content on the game, an updated review at some point, some stuff over on Twitch. We'll figure it all out. And as always... I think I think I'm repeating myself at this point. I'm just gonna go with until next time, have a good one.